For a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, you can find a standard matrix. That's very nice, uh, because you can use this matrix to, all, to do all computations of the transformation, like finding images and pre-images, finding compositions and inverses of transformations. Unfortunately, for transformations between abstract vector spaces, we do not have such a matrix yet. In this video, you will learn how we can find such a nice standard matrix for transformations between abstract vector spaces. So, let's take a look. So, what's the idea? We have our vector space V and our vector space W and some transformation T from V to W. And V and W may be awkward, so T is not implemented by matrix. But we can use coordinate vectors. First, we use our coordinate vector transformation phi B to go to Rn and to find coordinate vectors xp. And for w, we have another basis, say basis c, so we have our phi c, maybe uh, with only m vectors, and we find our t of x in the basis c. And now the nice part is the xp is a coordinate vector, so it's a vector in Rm. The t of x in c is also a vector, but now a coordinate vector in Rm. Because if you want to go from xp to t of x, c, you can use a matrix, because there you have one vector which is mapped to another vector. We will uh, call this transformation tm, and we call the matrix of this transformation m. The matrix of t with respect to the basis b and c, shortly m. But how are we going to find this matrix m? Well, that works as follows. We'll start with xb, so we start over there. Xb is just a vector in Rn, so it has ways C1 up till Cn. So we plug those ways into a vector. And then we go up. Since we have our basis, we can find our x. Uh, if we have Xb, because x is just C1, B1 plus C2, B2 up till Cn, Bn. That's the definition of the coordinate vector. Then we go to the right with t to find t of x. Well, t of x, just plug x in. t of x is a t of Cb1 plus Cb2 up till Cbn. And then we use that t is a linear transformation, so we can take it all apart. So the t of x becomes a c1 times tb1 plus c2 times tb2 up to cn times tbn. And then we are uh, oh, still on the right and up. And then we go down. And we get over here. We take the coordinate vector on both sides. So we take the t of x in the basis c, and then we also have to take it on the right hand side. And now we use this also this coordinate transformation, this is a linear transformation, so we can also take everything apart. So we get a c1 times the t of b1 in c, plus c2 times t of b2 in c, etc., up till cn times t of bn in the basis c. And now you see you have c1 times vector, plus c2 times vector, plus c3 times vector, up till cn times vector. So you can turn this into a matrix times a vector. Now this uh, vector over here, containing c1 to cn, is just xb. So here we have our xb. On the left hand side we have t of x in c, over there. And in between we have a matrix, our matrix m, which we are trying to find. So how do we find our matrix m? Well, we just compute tb1, find its coordinates vector in the basis c. That will be our first column. Then we find tb2, compute its coordinate vector in the basis C will be our second column up to the last one. And there we have our matrix mi, M, 